Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we are taking a look at our Swagman XTC4 bike platform rack here at eTrailer. So this bike rack may be an option for you if you're looking for something that is really sturdy, really simple, doesn't have extra frills and bells and whistles that you may not be interested in paying for, and something that can carry around four bikes. So if you have your family, you have your friends, you all wanna go for a bike ride, this may be the platform rack for you. Now, depending on your bikes, where they sit, what kind of frame it has, as well as its wheelbase, you may have to make some of your own adjustments. What we had to do here was we switched around the hooks so that the shorter one was on this side and the longer one was on that side, just because we have a children's bike right over here towards the end. So make sure that you know what you're doing with the different frames and I'll guide you through the features of the bike rack. So we're gonna take some of these bikes off so that we can take a closer look at our bike rack and see how it works. Now this does have a weight capacity of 35 pounds per bike. So you are gonna to have to make sure that your bikes are within that weight capacity. That's the average capacity for your normal platform and hanging style bike racks. But if you need a little bit extra more, if you have an electric bike, this might not be the best bike rack for you, but for your normal bikes, this is usually enough. Now, a very important part of this bike rack are the wheel hoops. So these hold your tires into place and they come with this rubber strap. So you're gonna move this strap around your wheel and strap that down. So these can accommodate tire widths of up to 2.5 inches. But if you have a fat tire bike, that's okay because you can also get the extra or the separate um, adapter which is going to create a larger wheel hoop that can accommodate tires of up to five inches. On each end of the wheel hoop are these knobs. So if you loosen these knobs you can see how you can move your hoops back and forth to accommodate different wheel bases. Now honestly it's easier to move this over by right where that knob is instead of by the hoop itself. So if you have some difficulty make sure you're holding it in the right place. The XTC4 utilizes these ratcheting frame hooks. So these come down and secure your bike's frame. So notice how as you push it down, it ratchets down and you can't bring it up. Now one thing about these hooks are that they are more for keeping your bike upright than clamping it down. You actually don't need to clamp this all the way down onto your frame, just enough so it stays in the upright position because what's actually doing most of the work are the straps around your wheels. Now with this frame hook style, if you do have an alternate frame bike, like a step-through bike, a children's bike, like what I have here, or a woman's bike with a really low frame, what you may have to do is get a frame adapter bar. So this is gonna bring that level right up there, just so that you can clamp that hook down on it with no problems. Now, this, since this is a ratcheting arm where it goes down, but not up, if you do want to release your bike, there is a button right over there at the end of that hook. So you're going to have to press that in order to bring it up. Now, if you want to take your bike off, the first place you start are going to be at the wheel straps. So you're going to pull that wheel strap so that it comes out of that tab holding it in place and do the same on the other side. Once those straps are released, you can then go to the hook and press on it to release that hook from the bike's frame. One thing I do like about the XTC4 is how much clearance you have between the end of the bike rack as well as your vehicle, which is nice because then you can stand right over here on the inside as you take your bike off. Depending on your clearance issues, one thing you can do is you can either just release this just enough to tilt your bike back and away, or if you need a little bit more clearance, you can take off the hooks completely. Now, if you need even more clearance to take your bike off or to put it on, another step you can take is to actually lower this mass. To do so, you just pull out that pin and drop down that mass. And look now at how much space we have to take our bike off. So now that we took our bike off, what we can do is now we have this pin that we had to take out in order to lower the mast. And with that mast lowered, we're gonna secure it with that pin again 
So you can see it has a ball cam at the very end and that's just gonna pop right into that hole. Now a pro tip from me to you is that even when your bikes are off, it's still a good idea to put these straps into their tabs. You just push that into the tab. That way it's not flopping around as you drive around, making these last a little bit longer. Now there's going to be some length added to the back of your vehicle, especially since this is a four bike platform rack. So I'm gonna just gonna take a quick measurement from the center of our hitch pin hole right there to the end of the bike rack, which is by this end of this wheel hoop. And that's going to sit at about 43, 43 and three quarter inches away. Now this has a slight shank rise. So if you measure right over here at the top of the bottom lip of our hitch receiver to the ground, it sits at 11 and a half inches. Now if you go over here to the end of the bike rack, to the ground, it sits at 18 and a quarter inches. So you can see how your bikes sit a little bit higher off the ground, the further out they are. Now this actually has a really impressive clearance from where that hitch pin hole is to right where that wheel loop is. So depending on your bike's handlebars as well as where um, or what kind of vehicle you're using, if you have a larger spare tire that goes right here, some people have issues when it comes to clearance with bike racks. This might be okay for you. So here's a measurement, which is from the center of your hitch pin hole to the center of that wheel loop, and that's gonna be 15 inches. So that will give you a guesstimate or will help you figure out if this is the right fit for your vehicle that has those clearance issues. Now, when you're not planning on taking your bikes out for a ride just yet, but you also don't wanna take your bike rack off, which I understand since it is a heavy bike rack, what you can do is you can fold this bike rack up into the portable position. So there's gonna be a pin and clip right over here by the shank. Just take out that clip, take out that pin, and then go over here to the end of the bike rack and just lift it up. With it folded up, you can then get this pin and clip you just took out earlier and put it through that hole in order to secure the bike rack in the folded position. With it folded up, the closest point to your vehicle is gonna be right over here, right at the end of that wheel hoop mast. And that's gonna be three and a half inches away from your hitch pin hole. With it folded up, it is a bulky bike rack, not as bulky as the style that has trays that cover really everything in the back of your vehicle, but this may, depending on your vehicle style, cover your license plate or your backup camera or your tail lights. It really depends on the fit. Now let's talk about how this fits into our hitch receiver. So this has a two inch shank, which fits into your two inch hitch receiver. It comes with an anti-rattle bolt. Now I personally recommend picking up a socket wrench with an inch socket or a 24 millimeter wrench, whichever is easier for you, because that makes it so much easier to tighten down that anti-rattle bolt. At the end of that bolt is going to be a lock. So you're gonna get two keys to use with that lock, as well as a cable lock that you integrate onto the anti-rattle bolt and you lock it in place. Now this is a really heavy bike rack at 59 pounds. So if you do have issues with lifting, you may just wanna keep it on your vehicle or you may wanna reconsider moving it back and forth between your vehicles. Also, since this is kind of a bulky bike rack, I do recommend folding it up into the portable position before finding a spot for it into your garage. I think this is the best way to keep it as compact as it can get for easier storage. Now that we have our bike rack fully loaded up, let's take it out onto the test course just to see how it works in action, see how it sways on the speed bumps as well as how our bikes fit onto it. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps and we can see here the up and down action and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage or driveway. 
So my final thoughts about this bike rack is I think it's a really good, affordable family platform rack. If you need something that is sturdy, especially compared to hanging racks, this will give you a nice platform, a nice base for your bikes just to keep them safe from point A to point B. Now the downsides to this bike rack is that it is kind of on the larger side, it is on the heavier side. Although it's really well distributed, that it's actually easier to carry than other bike racks of its weight. But it's just things you're going to have to think about. I do like how it has an integrated cable lock as well as a lock for your hitch pin. That way you don't have to get anything else to go with this. It's good as is. So if you want something affordable, good for your family, maybe this is a good option for you. If you want a nicer bike rack, maybe with more premium features like a tilt away with the bikes on, you might want to take a look at our Kuat Transfer V2 for bike rack, which has a unique goal post design, allowing you to carry more bikes while making it easier to mount. So those are just the pros and cons, but I hope this helped you out. And that was a look here at our Swagman XTC4 bike platform rack here at eTrailer. My name is Evangeline and I hope you enjoyed the journey.